Hi there, my name is Nicholas, and I'm going to show you today how to bring a climate rag chatbot into production with Weave in four steps. So first of all, if we look at the industry, we see that it's very easy for companies to build prototypes. But then it's very hard to bring these prototypes into production. That's mainly because of two reasons. First of all, people are just not confident in the performance of their Gen AI applications. That's because evaluation of single generations is quite hard. On the other hand, even if I know that my generations are bad or my performance is bad, it's actually hard to iterate on the performance of my app. And that's because typically we have complex systems of different chains of models with retrieval systems, with function calling, that make it hard to optimize the overall software. And so how does we help? We provide currently two main features. On the one hand, we provide tracing that allows you to monitor in development or in production how specific generations were generated over different components. On the other hand, we provide evaluations that give you a systematic way to benchmark and calculate quantitative metrics to evaluate the performance of your app. Today, we're going to have a look at how to bring specifically a climate rag chatbot into production. So that means we're going to have a look at how a chatbot can use different sources from PDFs and websites to answer questions about climate change. So typically what we've seen amongst different users is that there are four steps in bringing uh, prototypes into production. The first two steps is what we would call online monitoring. So I build a prototype and the first thing I want to do is I just want to deploy it to a smaller user group or to some place in production uh, and, and monitor the usage. The second step is I would also want to qualitatively assess specific questions, spe specific answers, and also add user feedback. Once that's done, I still need some way to quantitatively benchmark my performance. And that's where offline evaluations come into play. The first thing I want to do is to create an evaluation data set on which I can systematically benchmark. And then based on that, I can continuously improve my model on the, on, on the one hand and also my evaluation pipeline to make it more representative for my data, for my user data and for my uh, use case. Let's dive in. So the first thing we want to have a look at, the first step is, as I said, an online monitor. So I have a prototype, I deploy it to some production environment and I want to focus on monitoring on the one end governance aspects, such as costs and latency. And on the other hand, I want to surface debugging errors um, and also analyze traces qualitatively. Now let's have a look at, at Weave. So if I open up Weave, I see here on the left hand side, traces, and then here evaluations. So now in this case, I'm clicking on traces and I have all the different functions that I monitor are listed here. In this case, I want to have a look at my rag predict function here. So I go ahead and select that one. These are all the calls that were made to my rag chatbot. So you can see a nice overview of inputs and outputs. And now in this case, I can see, for example, the specific question uh, that was asked to the chatbot, the specific answer that was provided by the chatbot, and then also the documents that were used to answer, either in, in raw text, markdown mode, or as in code mode. As I said before, I can also directly see what was the cost, uh, what was the latency, and how many tokens were used. Now, this is great because I can do that in development, but I can also directly use that in production. So this is highly scalable and can track in life whatever calls are being made to the Rack chatbot. Now, the next step is I actually want to understand how it, this specific generation was generated. So I can click on here and now I see the trace. So now I see since this is a rag, the first thing that happens is there's a vector store that's being searched. So I'm looking for chunks of information uh, amongst all my different PDFs and websites to ingest into a prompt. And then this prompt will be given to a chat model that is gen generating the final response. So in this case, I can see the overview. I can see that this was the specific question. Uh, I can see that this is the specific result that was given. Uh, and I can see the specific source documents. So in this case, I can see the first one. I can inspect the chunk to understand qualitatively. Does it make sense? Is it relevant? 
and where does it come from? Now, in order to do this monitoring, all I need to do is basically just add a single decorator to any function. So that means uh, whenever I have a function or a nested function or an agent with a function call, sequential calls, I just need to add a decorator to any function, and then I'm automatically tracking the input, the output, the cost, and the trace. We also have a number of different integrations with OpenAI, with Mistral, with Gemini, and also with different frameworks, such as Langchain, Llama Index, DSPY, that make it very easy for you to track and monitor your application in development and in production. So once I have monitoring set up for my prototype, and I'm able to qualitatively assess traces, in development and production, typically the next step is to gather user feedback. And if we go back into Weave, you can see that this was the code tab. And then next to the code tab, I have my feedback tab. If I click on here, you see that three days ago, I added a comment and a reaction. So to any trace, I can add feedback. And then for any of these traces, there is a feedback list that is being gathered. In general, we consider two types of feedback. We consider expert feedback, where experts come in, and add questions, or annotate different discussions. Or we have user feedback, where the actual user, while using the application, rates whether it's a good or a bad experience. So if we click on the Use tab here, you can see that for the latter part, to actually get user feedback, all you need to do is copy these three lines of code and embed them into any of your UIs. So you can just easily add three lines of code to any kind of app that is exposed to the user in order to get feedback back into the Weave program. On the other hand, it's also very easy to get the data out to let annotators annotate, for example, all of the bad, badly rated responses, improve them, and then save it back as a feedback or as a data set to Weave. So getting data in and out of Weave through these feedback mechanisms is very easy. Now, it's good to have a list of feedback and to be able to qualitatively assess how inputs and outputs look for specific generations. But in order to get the application to production, I need to quantitatively assess the performance. I need to have systematic benchmarking in place that, that tells me how good my app is performing. So now we're at the third step on my journey from prototyping to production. We want to create a systematic benchmarking that calculates quantitative metrics on which we can improve our app. So the first thing we need to do in order to do that is to create a data set on which we can evaluate. So typically what we see people do here is they would take all the production calls with bad user feedback, have them annotated by experts and corrected, and then save that as a golden data set to evaluate on. Once I have that, the next step is to have defined scores, judges, or deterministic functions that calculate quantitative metrics based on which I can improve my app. So if we go back into Weave, um, we can see that we jumped into evaluations here. And our evaluation has a similar overview as traces. We have some inputs and we have some outputs here. Only that in this case, the inputs are, on the one hand, uh, the data set. So this is the data set I was talking before about. There's, there's a question, there is a target answer, and then there's a source. And so these could be sourced by um, users or experts. Then as a second step, I have scoring functions. These, again, are performance metrics and safety metrics in this case. And then as a, as a third ingredient, I have my actual model. And so you see that this model is something completely open. It's completely open to what you want to define here. Since this is a rag, I have a chat model. I have a vector store and I have a prompt. And whenever I change anything here, I will automatically create a new version. So I can click through my version, see what changed. And I can also see for any of these versions where this model was actually used in production or in my testing. Now, as the output of my evaluations, you see that I have these metric groups. I have the performance metrics, and in this case, that would be the correctness uh, as measured by two different judges to circumvent bias. I have my retrieval as a deterministic function, 
And then I have safety metrics where until now I only have the hallucination as measured again by two judges. Again, I also have the tokens, the cost, and the latency as governance metrics aggregated here for every test. Now, this is great to have a good overview about different evaluations and to compare them metric by metric, or also to drill down into each of these metrics and evaluations to understand how different spe specific examples were evaluated. However, it would be great if we could just have a direct comparison between two evaluations or more. And so that's exactly what we're focusing on in the last step. So more generally, once we set up an online monitoring system and an offline evaluation system, we want to continuously improve our app in order to bring it to production. One part of that is, of course, to compare how different model versions improve. But on the other hand, we also need to constantly improve our evaluation pipeline. That means on the one hand, we need to continuously feedback, user feedback, add new data to our evaluation, evaluation data set. And at the same time, we might also want to add new scoring functions, new functions to detect hallucination, or new functions to calculate correctness. And so there's on the one hand, a model that is changing, but on the other hand, also the evaluation pipeline that is changing all the time. And in order to not lose track of all these moving parts and to compare different models and to make sure that we compare only the results of the same evaluation pipeline, Weave will help you. And if we go back into Weave here, what I can do here in my evaluations tab, I can actually click on two of these or multiple ones, and then I can click on compare evaluations. And then I will automatically have a generated report where I can see on the one hand, Rater charts that will show me that in this case, my red model here seems to outperform my blue one in nearly all aspects. I can see a nice bar chart. I can go down and I can see what the actual difference is between these models um, by clicking here on diff only. In this case, I can see there's only the chat model that changes. I have GPT-4 mini as a challenger model and as a base model, I have my haiku one. And so I can go down and just compare metric by metric that and see that HiQ is outperforming my GPT-4 oh, mini one on this small data set. And if at the end I still want to have an understanding of specific examples and how they compare, I can go down to the bottom here to see all my examples. The input, the answer, the target source, and then the outputs. In this case, I only have seven examples. But if I have multiple examples and I really want to just narrow it down to a specific set of examples, I can use my filters here. So here I can select the correctness metric and I can see that these are different feature points, sample points here. And I can select, for example, these group of samples where I can see that uh, my baseline model performs at 100% while my challenger model performs at 0%. And so from these, there are two samples left. I might want to choose the examples where the models had a similar output. So I might choose one where the model latency is similar. And so in this case, I'm choosing this one. And now there's one single example remaining where I can see that I have on the one end here, my, my question, my target answer, my source. And then here I have the contents side by side, the source documents side by side, um, and if I go further down, I can see tools that might have been used or not, and I can see specific perform performance metrics that were used. I can always click on one of these to understand, again, how were they calculated, how, what was the specific input and the specific output in order to use them. So to summarize, we first set up an online monitoring system with a focus on tracing and gathering feedback, and then we set up an offline evaluation pipeline where we benchmarked different models and systematically compared them based on an evolving evaluation pipeline. And generally, I try to share some best practices that we've been observing for people uh, to get from prototype to production. Uh, I hope this was helpful. Generally, there are a lot of new features coming and we're always very open to talk to users and to exchange on best practices. With that, see you around and happy tracing.